It was 330 BC, a 30-year-old Euclid published the elements, containing 13 books. Book 1 contains 23 definitions, 5 postulates, 5 common notions, and 48 propositions. Postulates are assumptions, fact, or as a basis for reasoning, which not to be proven. The first four postulates were accepted without controversy, but... The fifth raised eyebrows for quite few. Postulate 5 states that if a straight line falling on two straight lines makes the interior angles on the same side less than the two right angles, then the two lines, if produced indefinitely, meet on that side on which are the angles less than the two right angles. So, dito yan. Postulate 5 is not as easy that can be understood intuitively. It doesn't explicitly say that parallel lines exist. However, it plays a crucial role on the proofs of the many properties of parallel lines. Kaya tinawag siyang parallel postulate. But Euclid presented the definition of parallel lines on his book 1, definition 23. Parallel lines are straight lines which being in the same plane and being produced indefinitely in both directions do not meet one another in either direction. Ginamit ni Euclid yung fifth postulate after proving 28 proposition. But no one knows if he was doing this, he was looking the fifth postulate as a theorem or a postulate. The remaining 20 propositions, he used the fifth postulate for the properties of parallel lines including a fact that two parallel lines are equidistant everywhere. The fifth postulate seems more like a theorem than a postulate that for more than 2,000 years, most mathematicians were convinced that Euclid was not clever enough. They were proposing proofs of it. Countless mathematicians attempted to prove that the fifth postulate is a theorem, one of which is Ptolemy in the 2nd century. Then, in the 5th century, Proclus pointed out flaws on the proof of Ptolemy and Proclus also presented this proof, which is found also flawed. Then, it came 8th and 9th century that Arab scholars translated Euclid works into Arabic. They and their followers also attempted to prove parallel postulate. So the quest continued in Middle East and West for many centuries but all proposed proofs were flawed. As mathematicians proving the parallel postulates, takatagal-tagal, here comes the 18th century. Some proposed Clearer version of the postulate. The renowned was by a Scottish scientist, John Playfair. So it is known as Playfair postulate. Playfair's form of the parallel postulate states that through a point, not on a line, there is exactly one line parallel to the given line. So ito yon. There is a point and there is a line. So may isang linya down na dadaan sa point that is parallel to the given line. On the same century, Italian teacher and scholar Girolamo Sacchieri tried a clever new approach to the fifth postulate. May mga rason siya. Sabi niya, Euclid's axioms do not contain any contradictions because it is based on the real-world models. Second, sabi niya, parallel postulate can be proved from Euclid's other axioms, but so far, no one has been able to prove it. Then third, Suppose it can be proved, sabi niya, if we replace parallel postulate by negation, then contradiction will be put in the system. Therefore, if I use the negation on the parallel postulate as an axiom and find a contradiction in the new system, I will have shown that the parallel postulate can be proved from the other axioms even though I don't actually have a direct proof of it. So negation of Playfair's postulate has two parts. First, through a point not on a line either, case number one, there are no lines parallel to the given line. Or the second, case number two, there is more than one line parallel to the given line. Your first case was easy to take care of. Definition of parallel lines provided by Euclid. However, the second case, Sacheri could not seem find a clear contradiction. And it convinced none of the mathematicians. It was published 1733 in his book, Euclid's Vindicatus. Sacheri's approach was revised by four people, but first the three of them started by questioning. 1810, Frederick Goss, a uh, Russian, 1829, named Nikolai Lovachevsky, and the third from Hungary, Hungarian army, Janus Bulyai. They start by questioning, can there be a system of plane geometry in which, through a point not on the line, there is more than one line parallel to the given line? All of them, kahit magkaiba-iba sila ng lugar, came to the surprising conclusion that 
through a point not on a line, there is more than one line parallel to the given line. The resulting system contains no contradiction. Hence, the parallel postulate cannot be proven from the other four postulates of Euclid's geometry. Yun yung sabi nila. It was 19th century, following the footsteps of Satcheri, Bernard Raymond wondered, looking at the part one of the negation of postulate five, can there be a system of plane geometry in which through a point not on a line, there are no parallels to the given line. Raymond observed that extended continuously did not necessarily imply infinitely long. Kasi sa circle, an arc of a circle can be extended continuously but its length is finite. So sabi niya, a straight line of finite length can be extended continuously without bounds but all straight lines are of the same length. He published his new system of geometry in 1854. And he succeeded in constructing a mathematical model satisfying the first four postulate and the parallel postulate. So here is the visualization of the Riemannian geometry. Plane here refers to the surface of the sphere. We know that it is impossible to draw a straight line of a spherical surface because it is curved. This means that no lines can be truly parallel. So this is non-Euclidean geometry. And here also points refers to the location on that and lines here refers to the great circles. The great circle divides the sphere into two equal parts. It is really great because it is the longest circle that can be drawn on the sphere. In here also, the shortest path between any two points or any locations is an arc. Where this arc is a great circle containing those points. Any great circles in here, as you can see, it intersects. So, this geometry has no parallel line. In the middle of 19th century, there were three brands of geometry, namely Euclidean geometry, Lobachevsky geometry or the hyperbolic geometry, and the Riemannian geometry or elliptic geometry. We're going to compare these three geometries. Euclidean geometry states that through a point not on a given line, there exists a line parallel to the given line. Sa Lobachevsky geometry, through a point not on a given line, there are at least two lines parallel to the given line. So, marami. Remaining geometry, there are no lines parallel to the given line kasi mag intersect So, walang parallel line. Sabi naman ng religion geometry, two parallel lines are equidistant everywhere. Lobachevsky geometry, two parallel lines are taken to converge in one direction and diverge in the other. And remaining geometry, Parallel lines do not exist. In terms of the sum of the angles of any triangle, of course, it is 180 degrees in Euclidean. In Lubachevsky, the sum of the angles of any triangle is less than 180 degrees. And we say that A plus B plus C is equal to 180 minus the area of the triangle. And the sum of the angles of any triangle in Riemannian geometry is greater than 180 degrees. That is, A plus B plus C is greater than 180 or equal to 180 plus the area of the triangle. In terms of the ratio of circumference and diameter in Euclid is equal to pi or 3.14, 15 and so on. But in Lubachevsky, it is greater than pi. And in Riemannian geometry, it is less than pi. Lastly, in Euclidean geometry, polygons with different area can be similar because not all similar triangles are congruent. But in Lubachevsky, similar polygons of different areas does not exist. Why? Because similar polygons are congruent. So it means looking at this figure, kung ang tao andito, kung lalapad siya, palayo, liliit siya, and then palayo pa, liliit pa siya. Similar polygons are congruent. Now, the question is, what is true geometry? What is the best geometry? It is not about what is true and what is the best geometry. It is about what geometry works best. So if you're a builder or a surveyor or a carpenter, you are going to use Euclidean geometry. And if we are a theoretical physicist, then we can use Lubachevsky geometry. And if you are an astronomer studying distant galaxies, then we can use Riemannian geometry.